All right, so we got Dragon Age, the Velgard, 22 minutes of gameplay with BioWare. Let's get to video. Now, I've never played Dragon Age before. I'm just going to be completely honest with you. But I actually did react to like a What's few up, of the trailers. What's up, everybody? I'm Cap Bailey, and this is our What's extended up? look at Dragon Age, the Veilguard's gameplay. I'm here with BioWare lead developers Corinne Bush and John Epler. What's up? Corinne, What's up, Corinne? What's up, John? What up? Hey, all. So today, we're going to be helping out one of our companions, Davrin. Okay. This is part of his personal arc to rescue the Griffins long thought extinct. Okay. We're going to take a quick journey through the lighthouse, your base of operations. We're going to head into the crossroads and make our way to the dark swamps of Hosberg wetlands. Okay. So you're in the lighthouse, as Kryn mentioned, this is your base of operations that you inherited willingly or unwillingly from Solus. Uh, it is located in the Fade. It's where Solus oh, was snap. able to start planning his rebellion against the Elven gods millennia ago. Right now, you and your team have occupied it, started to build it, started to shape itself around your personality. As Kryn mentioned, we are going to go talk to Davrin, which is who is located up above. And each of these spaces- Bro, are we like in the sky or something? Around your companions as you, as they live there, as they basically spend their or their arcs in those rooms and we see here the glowing light i got this in 1080 also it's ready for us let's check in with him right, let's go something wrong got a message a place called the cauldron was attacked that's some sort of gray warden tavern yo look at the horns so secret warden readout no idea what goes on there and why are you involved because whatever attacked it sounds like the gloom howler what who so, is this earlier in davern's arc you were introduced to his nemesis the gloom howler creature that's been hunting and stalking wardens for quite some time it's kidnapped okay. a bunch of other griffins war davern has been trying to track it down. kidnap a lead, so we're gonna go find this and go tra track this thing down now davern he prefers the direct approach we're gonna yeah. choose a tough response and see if we can get his approval oh yeah yeah that's me i'm all i'm well, always direct have the same thought What's left of the wardens are still licking their wounds. So we handle this alone. That's a big Just bird. Go to the cauldron and get the griffins back. Yeah, what he you said. Promise to behave, boy. Listen to every word I say. Stay out of trouble. Don't do anything dumb. And don't eat any. I think we get the point. He was just breaking down the rules. told me there's a word for the bond between a griffin and warden moving as one. Turlum. Until Hassan and I have that. I'm supposed to keep him safe. Um, he's ready. That I find the Griffin adorable. I do too. Very importantly, I know he's, he's a little scary though. His mind. Yes, you can pet Asan. Well, we can pet thank him. Goodness for that. And all right, what are we going to be ready. doing next? He's ready. He's up for this. All right, we're going to finish getting this information from Davern on the Gloom Howler, and we'll be off to Hosberg in the Crossroads. We're off to see the wizards. by having faith in each other. Maybe. I suppose you were born for this sort of fight, boy. All talons and temper. And a sharp tongue to remind you of it. As long as he backs it up. Turn up a little so bit. So I assume that a song Ooh, that's a little too loud. during the gameplay. Oh, absolutely. In fact, a lot of Davern's abilities revolve around calling a song in the heat of battle. Oh. I in particular love when you're going against enemies. You see a son swoop down, especially if it triggers a combo between your companions. Okay, okay, I like that. mentioned earlier, one of the interesting, the fun things we've done is if you see the lights on in a room, companions have something to say. You can see Harding up in that space there, uh, Nev behind you as well, and Bellara. Oh. But we have a mission ahead of us. We're going to go find the Gloom Howler if we can, and we're <laughs> going to go through the crossroads in order to do that. And the crossroads, if you've played previous Dragon Age games, uh, Trespasser in particular, is a location in the, the fade that contains a number of alluvians allowing you to travel across Thetis in a matter of minutes. But oh, at this okay, point, that the sounds nice. Under assault by so, this the is one of them. Elven gods. It's a dangerous place, and we are going to be in for a bit of a fight. And this alluvian, the Vera Voss, is the central focus point of the lighthouse. This is going to take us to Solus's pocket area of the crossroads, and it might look a little bit different from what you've seen in Trespasser. Uh oh. Can you tell us a little bit about the role that the crossroads plays in the structure and the gameplay? Yeah, so the crossroads is again, it's the area that you spend a lot of time traveling through as you go from area to area. Obviously. It's also a space that has at one point ser served as Solus's main base of operations and training ground for his rebellion against the elven gods. So 
as you go through it, you're going to find fragments of the past, the things that Solus had done previously that are going to give you a bit of insight into Solus as a character, but also into the elven gods and their motivation. How big is this game? Some of my favorite content that you'll find if you go exploring in the crossroads is these opportunities to actually relive some of the memories Solus had during his rebellion. Yo, that's hard. You get to take part in this ancient rebellion. And here we have the caretaker, a mysterious spirit that was actually here before Solus was and started oh, look at the to scenery. The help scenery looks Solus nice. Rebellion, but also to turn this into a safe haven for spirits. Again, as I mentioned before, the gods are assaulting the crossroads, so it's no longer the safe haven it once was. But you're going to work with this caretaker through quite a, a large amount of uh, ancillary content to rebuild this into that safe home for these creatures. That if anyone knows Solus, he has a tremendous amount of affection for spirits. Oh, okay. Oh, right. they got snow in his. Uh oh, uh oh, uh oh, uh oh, uh oh, uh -oh, uh -oh. And this time we're playing as a mage. Oh, whoa, 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 whoa. Now, mage is one of my favorite classes Ooh. to play. It's primarily a ranged attacker. Okay, so this and is different. When we're surrounded by hey, hey, he's moving, spawn, though. I like this. He's moving. I really have to use a variety of strategies to control the battlefield. Yeah, there's a lot of enemies. I'm going to use my heavy charged attacks to knock down these ghouls, get them hey, out I kinda of the way. I kind of like this. And of course, dark spawn What's are vulnerable that? to fire. So we made sure to equip our fire staff, have our fire abilities on hand. You may notice something about the dark spawn too, is that they look a little bit different than they have previously. And part of that is because Gillanane, who has been always been focused on using the blight as essentially a as crafting Ooh, material oh, way to okay. alter life itself, has Ooh, been enhanced. Wait, the gameplay looks the nice as part of her army. I'm gonna pause it real quick. I'm gonna, I, you guys know I don't, I don't I never pause it, but I just want to say this quick thing. I'm liking the gameplay. I'm liking the game. I've never played Dragon Age before ever in my life. I'm liking the gameplay a lot. Corinne, I noticed that you were doing a combo opportunity. Can you tell us a little bit more about how the role that plays in the, in the actual combat? Yes. So the combat system in this game, the deep strategy behind it is really to manage the various abilities your companions and Rook have in concert. So in this case, Harding has a combo opportunity with Shred. It's going to apply the Sunder the sundered effect and deal mm. a high amount of stagger. Now you'll notice oh. I can combo that with Rook's ability Spirit Bomb. That's going to cause a detonation combo. So, again, okay, now that was hard. The here is it's very snowy, very mountainous. The Crossroads is a realm that reflects the waking world. Wait. In this case, it's an amalgamation of all the real world spaces is this out now or what what is in the case we've got hosper we've got other mountainous regions so it's kind I of i like the gameplay a lot i can't lie to you the bro swamp. and as you'll see as we move towards these alluvians the architecture around them very clearly reflects what's on the other side we're not going to spoil and tell you exactly what's on the other side but you maybe make a few guesses based on what you're seeing do I have to do the crossroads or can I just fast travel? Right I didn't have through? enough lit, that's why I spilled. So it depends how you progress through the game. Uh, the first time you go to any of the new regions in the world, you'll traverse the crossroads to get there. Okay. Subsequent times, we of course support fast travel, but it behooves you to actually go back and explore the crossroads as some of the deepest secrets lie within. So now you're in Hosberg Wetland. It's an area that has been almost completely consumed by the Blight. The Grey Wardens have set up an outpost here. Again, if you know anything about the Grey Wardens, they fight the Blight anywhere they see it. And oh, they're wow. noticing something strange is going on they're here. The Blight go. is not behaving as they expect it to and as, as it historically has. So they've set up shop in this uh, place called Lavendel. And you are here to work with them help them out and help them find an answer to the questions about the blight that they're asking oh. tell me a little bit more about this area it looks a little bit like a, a hub where you so is it like tools and, and stuff like for like information right. basically so here is that the trade-off one of the bases of the gray wardens so you'll see they've really built up a small fighting force here to hold off the dark spawn yeah what's more the gray wardens are a faction we're going to be working with throughout the game We've merchant got one of the Grey Warden Quartermasters. We're actually going to upgrade his shop. And okay, see so what it is, yeah. He has in store for us. See if maybe it gives us. Listen, I tell you all the time. Listen, if I was born in like the like medieval times, bro, I promise you, I'll be the richest merchant of all time, bro. I, bro, listen, I promise you, bro, I'll be the richest merchant literally of all time. An edge in combat. 
And the great warriors don't hate the player, the hate the game. They understand the stakes of the gods being out. They want to help you, but you need to help them first. They have, again, as Trin yep. mentioned, they're holding off the, the dark spine here. They have other priorities. So getting them more powerful allows them to more meaningfully contribute to your fight against that makes sense. Yeah, it's, a, it's a trade off. I understand that. Yeah. So where are we going next? All right, so uh -oh. we're heading Fast out of travel. the Grey Warden Fortress into the small town of Lavendel. Now, this used to be a beautiful place full of life, flowers, and you can see what yeah, it looks the dead. blight has had. Yeah. But the residents are still here. They're trying to make the most of their lives. Oh, and you can dang. see there's plenty of opportunities to help them. In fact, we're going to quickly check in with Finn the Physician and see what he has in store for us. So, Flynn, again, one of the focuses of this game is characters, not causes. I've been busy with patients, but I'm short on medical supplies. Oh, My dang. mentor, Oscar, he should have some. He has a cabin outside the village. If you're out there, tell him you saw Flynn, and they could use his help. Okay, and I got Flynn you. is a warden who you will do quests with. We wanted to make sure that the side content of Dragon Age of the Veil Guard felt as meaningful. Yo, and you see the water? The overall conflict of Yo, the game you see as anything else you do we don't want to you to just go off and do random tasks everything needs to feel meaningful either contributing to your fight against the gods or contributing to the growth of your companions and your the factions that you need at your side to stop the gods you look a bit worried we're not sure where some of our wardens are beckett and a few others we're supposed to check in we need to look out for each other more than ever that's true it's just, i know they took weiss helped hard and i hope they're okay all right, so we picked up a couple of quests in Lavendel, but we're here to help Dapper. Bro, look at the so water. Look whenever he steps through the through water. The you see that? Of Hossberg, it's kind of like his reflection. Whoa, 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 whoa. What was cauldron. that? So y'all tell me y'all couldn't warn me? Kind of organic. Y'all couldn't warn me that there was menaces down the here? Blight. Absolutely. So the blight at this point, as mentioned before, the wardens understand it's changed. It's become a lot more organic, a lot more alive. You're back in Dragon Age 2, Inquisition, Origins. The Blight, while it was a slow moving wall, it didn't have this almost sentience, this almost thought behind it. And obviously we've talked about how the gods that are out are blighted. That probably has something to do with it. And it's made this area far more dangerous than it would have been before. And you might oh. notice as we get Bro. into combat with some of these dark spawn, that they do look a little bit different than before, and that's very intentional. Gillanine, okay. the god of monsters, she uses blight like a medium to sculpt and warp the dark spawn to do her uh -oh. bidding. Oh, spirit bomb. Hey, I like the spirit purposes. bomb. I can't lie to you. It's good news. So right now, you'll see a couple of herlocks. Uh, Yo, look at the animation. Do you see that? Gross on its back. Again, the idea that the dark spawn and the blight is an you organic see the weapon. Mate? They're not just coming out and you know making swords making armor they're using the blight to augment themselves so they can more effectively defeat you Ooh. and also give the gods he's the on fire you're up in here but it's burning oh, hot he's on I'm actually gonna switch to my orb and dagger on the mage and those of you that were fans of the okay oh, oh, hold on hold on it's getting hectic it's getting hectic hold up it's getting hectic you might feel right hectic. at home with this this is a more melee focused, more agile version of the mage. Yeah, I'm, I'm liking this though. One I, of the I, I main like mechanics this. Mechanics here is you can use this elemental. Orb oh, you bet, bro, bro, you better drink some to juice. To apply stacks of elemental damage to the enemy, and you then drink some juice. them with your dagger to detonate them. Brother, drink some juice. You, have, bro, you have no help. Thank you. You better, so, bro. Again, Eat it now and later in, or something, uh, bro. You gotta, you'll you gotta. notice that there are blight pools. The yep, yep, yep. Spawn aren't just coming out of nowhere. The blight is spawning them again. Part of Gillanane's attempt to turn right, this right, into so he, an he army for the his health. gods is to use these dark spawn. Not just again, whereas you have the Venatori and the Antom, one case representing magical Bro, power, nice. in the other case like, representing I, I... physical strength. The dark spawn are representing overwhelming force. Oh, okay. That was a pretty clutch heal a little earlier, by it the was. way. It you was. It was. We've talked at length before that. Uh, I like this. Whenever he just he just mows, he just sprays them down. I like that a lot. Back. And uh, Nev in this game, happy to oblige with a kit of hey, healing spells. Can this be like multiplayer or what? So this would be great, bro. This would be go, bro. Companions is each this of would them, go insane with multiplayer. Abilities, the way that they're built, they're very thematically appropriate to the character. They're very focused on making sure that the gameplay and the narrative are as closely aligned as possible 
in the case of Nev versus Vlar versus uh, Amric or Mages, each of them has a healing ability that is thematically appropriate to them. It makes sense when you know them as a character. Watching you play, I'm struck by sort of the size and the scope of this particular area. It seems like there's a no, lot no. of exploration that I can be doing, right? No, no, no. I'm, I'm struck by the size of the entire game. You're telling me that there's, like, multiple different, like, I won't say worlds, but, like, there's multiple different, like, parts of the, of this game, and, like, you can just go through, like, that's crazy. I'm going to be honest. I'm, bro, I'm surprised of, like, the size of this game. Like, sure. That was really, that's really impressive to me. I can't lie of course, we are a mission-based game, but we really emphasize player autonomy. You can revisit these spaces. They're full of secrets, puzzles, some pretty incredible bosses and treasure. And of course, as we saw earlier in Lavendel, some really narratively rich side quests. One thing that's interesting is you'll find we're going on a quest for Davern, but Davern is not currently in our party. That's because Davern has gone ahead of us and is waiting for us at the cauldron. This is, again, we want the followers, the companions to feel like they have autonomy. And while they won't complete the quest on their own, they will go ahead and get things ready. So look, look at the water, look at there, the water. You can have a, you talk to them, you have a conversation with them, and it feels like they are as invested in the success of their, Bro, I'm loving the water their story as you. you are. This looks like a, a pretty Ooh. contiguous zone, is that right? It is, yes. Yeah, so it's full Ooh. of branching paths, different areas to explore. And what I love is the more bro, this gameplay you do is in the area, fire, the more bro. shortcuts you're going to discover. Uh, you're really gonna have a lot more flexibility in how you navigate between your remaining. Yo, what move was that? When well, I think something really interesting. Wait, 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 wait. What move was that? Go back. Do the same move. Is, there's the idea of each space has its own story to tell, and while those quests, you know, we talked earlier about those quests and side quests being narratively, narratively, narratively relevant, they also contribute oh, to oh, a oh. meta narrative, meta story about the space itself. So in the case of Hosper, we talked about how this is an area surrounded by blight, and you're kind of getting to the center of what exactly is going on in Hosburg and Lavendel, and these quests that you do, and the content Corinne is currently engaged in, helps to tell that story. Y'all, I'm so sorry. I'm locked in on the gameplay. I'm so sorry, y'all. I'm right. so sorry. I'm not talking or whatever, bro. I'm, I'm, bro. I'm up here attacking. I'm this, so dialed uh, in with the with the, with the with the gameplay. Let's it's crazy. Let's give them a quick hand. Is this like is this like only on like Steam or whatever? Like what what is this on? I might have to get this. All right. Because I don't I don't I don't, I don't, I don't usually play games like this. Of the environment to your advantage. I just saw that you could do a takedown move, so it's kind of a, a finishing move. You can you can now in this particular build, I'm really focused on using necromatic energies to siphon life force. But if I, for instance, wanted to go the stagger route, I could go a full takedown build if I like. Uh, it's a really uh, powerful, heavy hitting style of gameplay. All right. Well, let me so find out if I'm on new games. What up? Us, so let's see what he has to say. I'm sorry, y'all. The sound flies in. Yeah, a bad day at the cauldron. What could do that? What have they been hiding inside? So something the best drink the gate, say that's that probably not great. Looks like we should probably okay. get moving. We won't find out standing around here. Be ready for anything. <laughs> <laughs> so because we don't have Davern in our party, he's going to move ahead and wait for us while we bring Nev and Harding along to clear a way, clear a path for ourselves. To find Davern and get to where he is. That's cold. You can, can you actually use the. Uh, how Nev and Harding you can actually use the bird. Uh, That's cold. Bro. During the combat. Yeah. So Nev and Harding. Uh, Nev is a mage. Harding is a. Uh oh, more boss rogue, fights. And each of the classes. More boss fights. Can build and party. Well, not really boss fights, but more enemies. Want, but the idea is that the classes synergize and they can set up and detonate each other's abilities in a very interesting way. Now, because you have a lot of freedom in how you build uh -oh. your character. You Ooh. can again, as Ooh. said, you drink can some have juice. A, drink some juice. Party, all mage party, all warrior party. It still works, but in this case, uh, Nav and Harding are very effective at setting up and Bro. ending. In this case, as Corinne's going to show, you got to so be on your you got to be on your toes here, with this game. But I'm gonna be honest, really you can't you can't slack the once. Tactical layer of combat. If you get in that clutch situation where you've got this devastating incoming attack, great time to pause gameplay, 
weigh your options. And in this case, I'm gonna go back to our combo here and uh, see if I can just quickly get out of the way. <laughs> Ooh. All right. Set him down. Oh, move it, get out of the way, get out of the way. applied siphoning to these enemies. So I'm actually gonna be leeching Yo, their health hey, when I use my Yo, hey, that's my favorite game. looking attack. Like, bro, that's my favorite visual attack. I can't lie to you, bro. Now, that's my favorite visual attack in this game area, already. And that's part of I haven't even played this game before. On the combat encounters, if I don't destroy these blight boils, ghouls are going to continue to emerge. So I'm really oh. focused on what targets do I take down first? This enemy is a little I bit weaker. Even... I think I'm going to have my companions focus on them while I deal with this grenadier that's giving me some problem. <laughs> so that so that pile of like whatever that is right there. Yeah, I, I if he doesn't get rid of it, it's going to spawn more. Okay. Kryn is much more much okay. better at this okay. game than I am in this Brother 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 he <laughs> drink some well, juice. Most of the time, yeah. Brother drink some juice. Uh, You're down bad. But, drink some uh, juice right now. Each enemy again really leaning into the organic. The, what I love about the grenadiers is get out the way, get out the way. they basically rip off pieces of themselves and throw them at you which explode as blight. And again, Really leaning to the idea that the blight is, is organic. There, is there and like disgusting. a block button or no? There's like no block in this game. You just gotta dodge. It's fine. One thing that I'm noticing is that the, uh, the, way, the, the way. encounters can get pretty intense. You end up fighting a lot of Bro. different enemies. You can absolutely die if you're not careful. Yes, and this. Bro, that uh, attack is my favorite looking attack. I promise is, you, bro. Uh, well into the game. Oh, so he's going combat crazy. Encounters have really ramped up, and it really shows the importance of positioning, using your companions wisely. And looking for those synergies and combos. Oh, he now, died. This is interesting. We just went down. <laughs> We've built our companions to be able to come to our aid. So we're actually going to okay. use a revive here. Rub for wine. And Nev to the rescue. And as Corinne mentioned, this is later in the game. And Hosberg itself is a what I would consider a later game area. Um, and the encounter is a little bit more challenging. It's a more dangerous space. This shows up in the encounter, but it also shows up in the visuals. The story oh, yeah, this is here. a different this player. This is a place that you don't want this to is be. A different you don't player. want to be in Hosberg. It is full of dark spawn, full of blight, and generally not a pleasant place to be. Well, we'll be able to explore more of the cauldron when Dragon Age of Aelgard comes out on October 31st. In the meantime, Halloween? we are going to be continuing on with our IGN first coverage of Dragon Age for the rest of September. And for everything that's great about games and RPGs. Keep it locked on IGN. On IGN. Shout out to IGN, man. For this gameplay, um, I'm going to be honest with you. I'm really impressed. I'm really impressed. Now, I've heard of Dragon Age before. Maybe I've, like, I've reacted to, like, uh, maybe I, like, reacted to, like, their trailer one time before. Mm -hmm. um, I don't know, but I definitely heard of Dragon Age before. Uh, I'm really impressed. I'm really impressed about this. Um, Gameplay-wise, I was not expecting that at all. Um, this game has some of the best visual attacks I've seen, uh, in a game. Um, like, obviously, like, besides, like, you know, like, like, God of War for me. Like, and this is, like, my personal thing. I'm not, like, whenever, like, I, whenever I make comparisons to a game, this is often, like, my personal thing. I'm not, like, you know, going around and, you know, surveying everybody's, you know, answers, whatever, and then coming to you guys. And, no, no, no. This is, absolutely, this is all, like, this is, like, a personal thing. So, like games that i find like visual like visually like pleasing whenever like i'm attacking whatever games like god of war um black myth wukong, bro bro black myth wukong is absolute bro the visual attack is absolutely insane but i was not expecting any uh i was not expecting like i, <sighs> I can't even talk bro like, like the gameplay in this game is bro it looks really nice i can't believe like, here's the thing bro and i tell people all the time bro you can't sit here and, I mean, well, you can't, you can do whatever you want, but you can't sit here and say, oh, well, gaming is this and gaming is that. You never know what you'll see, bro. You can, like, look at one of these trailers or look at one of these gameplays, whatever. First of all, you know, if you're watching this, make sure you guys like the video. And if you did already, thank you so much. First of all, thank you for watching. I really appreciate it. But, um, you know, bro, bro, expand your horizon, bro. You, bro, you can't play the same game every day and say, oh, gaming's boring. Like, come on, bro. Stop that. You can expand your horizon. You can, you know, uh, get to new games, stuff like that. And, um, bro, like, just like I did, I, I didn't even know Dragon, I didn't even know I was going to like this game. Turns out, I kind of like it. It comes out October 31st. I'm most likely going to remember that because I like this game. So, comment down below, man. What do you guys think about this? Um, I am a newbie, a new booty. So, I'm sorry if I don't know anything about this game. That's my bad. Other than that, see you guys everything come out. And...